Morning world, it's the 28th of March 2020. It's about, I don't know, midday UK time. Uh, firstly, big thank you to those people who are sending me jokes. Brilliant. I know my delivery is not as good as professional comedians, but hey. 2% uh, of people I definitely think I should be dying with these jokes. 6% of people think I should be seriously hospitalised. 92% of people want me to carry on. So, And um, yeah, my... My health is not that brilliant, but I remember about two months ago, sometime during the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, looking at this virus and saying, yeah, probably everyone's going to get it, or at least 80% of the world are going to get it. And I thought that at that time I said that, yeah, 2% of people will die and 6 or 7% of people will be hospitalised and the rest will get a cold. And it's beginning to look like that's happening. Um, I've got some great jokes at the end of this. One of them so f is the best joke so far. It's absolutely brilliant. And I will name the person who sent it in because it's so damn funny. Meantime, we are approaching yet another peak of intensity over the coming few days. Seems to me from an astrological perspective that uh, this year so far has just been a succession of steadily increasing waves of pressure, gravity, stress, tension. And for a long time now, six months, nine months even, I've been looking at this time now at the end of March 2020 and saying that the end of March was going to be one of the two or three absolutely critical times of 2020. Now here we are, we've passed the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. We've passed Mars conjunct Jupiter, Mars conjunct Pluto. Now we're heading into what I'm seeing as the sting at the end of a tail of all of this. And we're heading into a short term period of really critical potentials. So I need to look at this. Firstly, in the next three or four days, Mars and Saturn are going to conjunct. They're only two degrees apart now. Mars is in 28 Capricorn now, 28 and a half. Saturn's just moved into Aquarius. They will conjunct in just over 72 hours from now. And we're not really feeling this yet. There's a lot of people sensing it in a kind of undercurrent. But because Mars is still in Capricorn and hasn't moved into Aquarius, it's not manifest or visible. Once Mars moves into Aquarius in about two, two and a quarter days from now, all of a sudden there's going to be a big sort of whoosh of energy and then for 24 36 hours it's going to get quite messy out there and there's going to be a lot of kind of sharp anger and the situations are probably likely to get out of hand for a very short period of time now if you know this is coming up you can prepare for it and not deliberately choose not to let your buttons get pushed not to do the headless chicken and not to, to sort of get irritated or angry with either what's going on in the world or what's happening to you. The hardest thing to do sometimes is to smile at people and say, right, I hear you, I'm listening to you, I'm gonna walk away now and think about what you've said and I'll come back to you in a few days time and we'll talk more about it. But that is exactly the right thing to be doing over this next three or four days because it's gonna be so, so easy for, for, for individuals to get their buttons pushed or for situations to suddenly inflame. There's something here like, um, like the gouging out of poison, the, the pushing of the scalpel in and extracting some type of bullet or poisonous mass. There's something about gouging and pulling out a big poisonous mass right now. Uh, I suppose anyone who's going in for surgery in the next two or three days you're probably going to get to the root of it. Anyone who's having a tooth extraction in the next few days, it's going to hurt like hell, but it's probably a good time to be doing it because at least you'll get to the bottom of things. At least you'll pull the poison out. But this isn't all. I've said previously in previous videos that I've noticed in a lot of individual client videos and I've not done any client readings in the last four or five days because I've, I've been coughing a lot. But I honestly feel like I'm about to start doing them again from next week. So I will be getting on my emails later today. I know I've got hundreds to reply to. Um, I've been seeing in clients' charts 
that the first week of April is also pretty intense. And as the closer we get to it now, the more I'm, I'm beginning to understand why I've been saying that. Not only is there Mars Saturn in three or four days time, there's also in six or seven days time, Mercury in Pisces, and Mercury's been in Pisces, it seems forever since mid January, with its blooming retrograde thing. Mercury is now beginning to accelerate out of Pisces, but it's going to hit Neptune. And Mercury conjunct Neptune in Pisces, words like fog, vagueness, cloud, instability, insecurity, misinformation, disinformation. There's, there's a lack of clarity, there's a lock, lack of transparency or logic. And this is coming up in six or seven days time. And then immediately after that, in seven or eight days time, it's the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. And Jupiter is just going to, it's already amplifying, bigging up, exaggerating everything that Pluto's doing in terms of the transformation of society, the transformation of the way we are governed collectively and individually. This is an absolutely massive time in human history. There's never been a time like this, to my knowledge, not in terms of the way we live our lives now. And there probably never will be again, although I'm already eyeing up mid-October later this year when I suspect there's going to be a resurgence of what we're going through now. Fingers crossed it's not going to happen, but we'll see. Um, and I, this is why I'm calling it the sting at the end of the tail, because this is the end of the major first wave of the traumas of 2020. And by the time we are, what are we now, the 28th? So 10 days from now, I honestly believe that we'll be through the worst of this. And that from then on, it's a question of containing and managing and gradually emerging. But if we're going to lose it, if we're going to go over the top, if situations are going to get out of hand, if there's going to be radical actions or, or just stupidity, any more stupidity than there always has been, <coughs> then it's going to happen in the next 10 days or so. So what can I say? Stay indoors. Keep, keep taking the ginger and the turmeric. Keep taking the lemon or the lime juice and the honey. Look after yourselves, get as much sleep as you can, use this opportunity. And if you're one of those genuine heroes who are out there working for the benefit of others, and I'm not talking about going to work, I'm talking about the bus drivers, I'm talking about the train drivers, I'm talking about the postman, I'm talking about the people who are still trying to keep society going, and I'm especially talking about, in my country we call it the NHS, the medical services. I, I, I know I'll go on about this one, but I am so grateful to live in a country where health care is free to everyone at the point of demand. Anyone in this country can go and get free health care like that. Now, that's the theory, and it does work 95% of the time, unlike many other countries. And I'm just so grateful to the NHS. They are the true heroes. They should get the bloody Nobel Peace Prize for medicine, I think. Anyway, I digress. We're approaching this peak now. This is it. This is the last peak. By the time we're into the second week of April, I, I, I'm, I'm going to nail me colours to the mast on this. And I've been wrong before, but I'm right more than I'm wrong. I honestly think but from then on, we're going to start seeing a slow, slow, but gradual decrease in the levels of stress, tension, problems, and things will gradually balance out as we get into May, June, July. There'll be a kind of change in the dynamic around the start of August as Mars moves into Aries, uh, start of July, sorry, as Mars moves into Aries. And by the time Mars goes retrograde, and then we've got that critical new moon on October the 16th. That's a subject for another time. By that time, Jupiter will be back with Pluto standing still and, and things will be changing. But we can deal with that one another time. 
Meantime, big thank you to the NHS for everything you're doing for everyone in this country. And a big thank you to all the medical practitioners uh, of all types, professional and um, holistic, allopathic and naturopathic, who are out there saving lives at the moment. Now, some jokes. <laughs> because you've got to laugh. Laughter releases endorphins into the system and it makes you more joyful, creates a better immune system. I'm sure there's science somewhere that backs that up. Right, so here's a couple of uh, poor work, medium ones. Then there's a couple of good ones. And then there's one absolute cracker. Right, so I sued, my, I sued the airport last week for losing my luggage. I lost the case though. I'm in day three of isolation. I met a spider. He was a nice chap. He was a web designer. Okay, these next two are good. What's the difference between COVID-19 and Romeo and Juliet? This is on the blog. Someone sent this in. Thank you. Well, COVID-19 is a coronavirus. Romeo and Juliet was a Verona crisis. Another one on the blog. This is brilliant. Advert in today's newspaper. Single man with toilet paper, would like to meet single lady with hand sanitizer for some good, clean fun. That cracked me up, but here's the best. And I'm gonna name the person here. I don't know who you are. I don't know if it's a pseudonym or a real name or whatever. I don't know your gender or anything about you, but thank you to Miran Crystals for sending in this joke. It's brilliant, and a few people have seen this. So there's this guy, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. This guy in hospital with coronavirus and he's waking up from a bit of a sort of deep sleep in corona and he's corona cone coma and and he sees this nurse approaching him with a washing kit and she's going to start washing him and he just mumbles in his sleep he says nurse nurse can uh, uh, are my testicles black and the nurse looks at him and says no he's 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 inane, he's, he's, he's drooling, he's not wake, wake yet. He, she ignored it. So she starts washing him from her shoulders down. He goes, nurse, are my testicles black? And the nurse says, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm a junior nurse. I can't check, with, uh, this, I'm afraid I can't help you with this. And he just looks at her and goes, nurse, are my testicles black? And he's wearing a ventilator and it's coming through a bit muffled, but she can hear him. So she looks around and says, well, there's no, there's no one looking, all right. So she pulled the cover back and she, bent down and had a good look and then she went back and she said to the guy sir I can assure you your testicles are fine and the guy just looks at her and rolls his eyes up in his head and leans over and pulls the ventilator mask off of his face and says nurse are my test results back that made me howl with laughter right so more on Mars Saturn tomorrow Sunday tomorrow whoa We'll see what tomorrow, let's see what tomorrow brings. Catch you later, world. Bye.